Hello everyone. Uh, right now doing a quick check for audio. Um, can you hear the music but also still hear me? we did a stream, uh, the music was almost non-existent, but you could hear me very well. But I'm trying to find that balance where there's something to fill the silence that doesn't override, like, when I actually say something. The music is almost louder than me. Alright, let me fix this. Alright. Is that a little better? seeing another stream so soon. Uh, yeah, we uh, because we do want, want to get these templates kind of done um, in relatively short order, but we also wanted to stream them, that means that I need to probably do a lot of streams to get these done. Because I could just take the week and do it without it being streamed, but um, uh, we don't want the stream to basically slow up the templates is what it is. So, so we're going to do a few of these until this, uh, the Breeds templates are, are well in order and the artists have them available to uh, to work with and create all those jeans for. Because we, don't, we don't want to send it to them all at the end, that would be mean. <laughs> The Lightning Ancient does not yet have a name. Or just for now, I might call it Ancient Seven, or I might call it the Lightning Ancient. Or I might call it the Next Ancient Breed. <laughs> Those are the three things I might refer to it by. Um, yeah, usually once we've got all the templates, the team will vote on names. But because we only have the one that's like finished, you know, because sometimes uh, the, the design of the dragon can inform its name a little bit, so. Um, So today what we're going to be doing is um, creating the flats, the flat colors for the dragon and its shadows, which will basically give us the template um, that will be used for uh, the gene creation and the uh, skin creation. Before we get too far in, I need to see if I need to duplicate my inks. I feel like my ink work on this one is a little bit thin. So I'm going to open up another dragon to compare it to, to make sure that I'm not getting, I'm not proceeding too quickly. So this is a finished, finished Jailer dragon and I'm going to here for the belly or the, for the background and I'm just going to compare side by side the line quality of both and make sure that I didn't get too thick or too thin here we might be okay let's see 
Just got a message from Acor and the music is getting a little loud. Apologies about that. Go. We'll try minus 26. There we go. Uh, looking at them side by side, I think this one has ever, the jailer has ever so slightly thicker lines. So we are going to be duplicating our ink layer. And maybe one more time to thicken up the lines just a bit. Let's try the two, the two inks. All right. If I was to move this over here. Okay, those seem like a similar line quality. I think I think that two duplications of the inks was the way to go. I'm gonna get rid of this third one. And we're going to close the jailer template. We don't need that anymore. selection by one pixel so that it kind of stays in the lines rather than hugging the edge of the line otherwise you get stray pixels and I'm going to use this as a starter for our base fill layer Now we're going to go over our inks and this base fill layer with a fine toothed comb and get rid of any extraneous pixels.
Oh, welcome to anyone joining the stream. Right now we're working on the uh, Lightning Ancient. It will be a gem breed that we're going to hope to have available in um, mid to late summer. We are aiming for three ancient breeds this year, so we will be completing this gem breed, but we will also, toward the end of the year, have a second gameplay and treasure earned breed, so we're kind of getting a bonus breed this year, which I'm very excited about. Um, still working on just refining the inks and making sure that uh, none of the pixels go where they aren't supposed to. On just a single illustration, this wouldn't be too much of a problem because once you see it at web size, you don't even see these things. But um, with the fact that this is going to have um, uh, dozens of genes and then probably hundreds of skins made from it, having a clean template benefits many artists. So it is um, a little bit more important to be picky um, with these templates. Some skin artists might know that we weren't very picky early on and there's some wonkiness in those templates and it's like, oh no. <laughs> Want to avoid that again. Right now I'm taking out a lot of these extra lines and that's because I can probably put those details back in with the shadow layer when we get to it. Uh, that way we'll keep the um, claws from getting a little bit too detailed. Like this dividing line kind of showing that the, the claw has a peak ridge at the top, that can be shown with shadow. I'm just gonna make these um, legs a little cleaner 
and then we'll see what happens with the shadow layer and if necessary we can put line back in but we do want to kind of keep this especially since they they're viewed um, we want to keep this clean especially since when uh, they're viewed at the web size which is 350 by 350 pixels all these little details get condensed and can get kind of lost so um, that's a very pointy little bit there now isn't it Let's take a look at chat here. How large is the original canvas size? This is uh, 2200 by 2200. Um, when we pass it off to the gene artists, it shrinks down to 1000 by 1000. And what we upload to the site for the skin artist is 750 by 750. And then what you actually see for your finished dragon uh, when it's all put together is 350 by 350. So this starts big and for various uses just keeps kind of getting smaller. Um, so right now what we've done is we've kind of cleaned up the inks to make sure that there's no extraneous pixels. We've cleaned up the base layer to make sure that nothing really went beyond the inks. And now we have two very uh, uh, meticulous uh, layers. And the nice thing about subsequent layers is that they all get grouped to this basic layer. Oh, I should probably view it without the uh, inks to make sure that there's nothing wonky going on here. Yeah, they all get viewed to this base layer, or grouped to this base layer, and that means that they won't go beyond the bounds of it, which means that all the work that we just did will benefit every future layer and make it a little easier. So I'm gonna just start working in a belly color. And to make it easier, I am going to um, change, um, maybe I'll actually go lighter. I'm going to change the base layer to be something that I can have more contrast against, and then I might choose something like a dark red. In the end, this is all gonna be grayscale, but I want something I can clearly see.
and I'm just gonna kind of do all the edges by hand. Because the interior lines of the dragon don't have, there's a lot of open lines, there's a lot of um, tiny spaces, doing them with the magic wand tool doesn't work quite as well in Photoshop. So we're just going to fill in anywhere that we want the belly color to be um, with our image generator. So we finished the belly layer, and now I'm probably going to work on maybe the horns next. And we are just clipping this to that base layer that we made um, 
very meticulously. Um, one thing about this, it looks like he's got a very thin neck. That's actually not the case, um, but it might visually appear to be the case. As you can see, the neck goes back here. It's because the fins are happening halfway down the neck. And so the neck and the body actually kind of do like a this this sort of thing, but because the, uh, see, how, see how the tail's like down here? Um, you can see it go, the, the fins always occur part way down the neck and the body. So we might have to change that visually. I'll need to think about that because it, it, he does have a normal size neck. It's just the fins are creating this optical illusion like because they're obscuring the line of the spine. Like it's all it's all behind there. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. I, I like the fins being halfway down, but we might end up with a fey neck situation. If you know, you know.
what I'm kind of doing right now is just making all my selections, but then turning them to an easy color to see against. Um, but I do have selections for um, things like the horns and the belly and stuff. There, they've been done. So like, I can select out the horns, I can select out the belly. They still exist. <laughs> I actually think I want these one, this dragon's claws to change with the torn color, so I'm actually gonna go back to what I just was just working on. There we go. someone's asking will the fans be the secondary gene yes um because we didn't do wings on this one we wanted to give a wide display area so these so these sort of you know dimetrodon like fans are, are going to be um where we display the secondary gene so that if we want to do the paw pads a different color, we can. Sorry, I've got my iPad set up next to me. I turned the sound off. You shouldn't be hearing any more dings. <laughs> make everything the same color again just so that I have an easy way to see where I'm putting the fins. So with this, I'm going to go a little bit overboard and cover every single bit of the fins. And then I'm going to use a layer mask to kind of take out the spines and make them have a nice gradation so they kind of merge into the body. So right now it's going to look like a very, very chunky selection and that's because it is.
I just located a tangent that I do not like. So I'm gonna be doing a little fixy fix. Um, right here, the tip of this fin just touched the tip of the other fin and it makes it look a little bit um, busy and indistinct in that area. So I am going to be re-inking this small segment just so that it reads a little bit better. Right now with this stream, I'm try you may have noticed I'm trying a thing where I turn up the music when I'm 
and mute myself when I'm not don't have anything active to say. Otherwise, you just get a lot of noises of me saying, "Oh, whoops," or "Oh, I need to go back and do that again," or "Oh, uh, I'm I'm just thinking a happy little Finn." I don't know. I, I get very rambly when I have to fill a silence, so having the music fill the silence has been nice. <laughs> I think that's going to show a little bit better now. Um, I might still, like that, that fin with shadow will still show that that fin spine is doing its own thing. But I think that keeping the inks a little bit smoother makes a little bit of sense here because there is a lot going on in a small space. Simplifying them might be a good idea. All right, back to the fins. It's hard to tell what's the wing and what's the tail spines. Uh, that's true, and it's actually because they are a continuous sort of fin, there is no real wing here. It just gets bigger and smaller depending on where it is. That said, um, with a lot of the dragon templates, um, the main area where the, where the hair on the back, like the dragon's mane is, that's part of the secondary, that will often have a slightly different color than the wing area. And we might be able to do that here. Like bog sneaks, their head fins, and same with fays, are a little bit of a different color than their wings. So I think that we can use that dual tone using those same, you know, um, hex codes and stuff that the image generator likes to uh, um, get a very similar effect here, where we can break we can break up the areas just a little bit so that they um, are a little bit more distinct from one another. Right now we're just getting the, the flood fills in so that I can edit it and put some gradients in that will finesse some of the spines and things a little bit to look like they are transitioning into the main body. Actually hate this little thing right here, so I'm just gonna erase it. There we go. Okay. What about the tangent on the part of the tail I was just working on? Is there another tangent? If I spot it later, I'll come back to it. I don't I don't see it right now. <laughs>
So I'm thinking, actually, I'm looking at these fades. I'm thinking I might, on the interior of this, take out the fades that kind of go toward the tail and just, then just extend the ones that are the tips down. I'll probably keep the mainline tail so that way the trick tail has a nice transition into the uh, spine. But I'm thinking the rest of these, the interiors, it's getting too busy in here. Too busy. Too busy in the tail. selections but now I know how I'm going to do the rest of it so it was better to mess up on this little tail than to have decided to do this like on the wings. <laughs> I've been figuring it out there. And the nice thing is I'll know what to do for the next dragon template too for the same grade. I think something like that. I'm doing right now is I'm just making lasso tool selections and then I'm using a, a gradient to um, figure out what is erased and what isn't and it creates a very smooth transition that I wouldn't be able to do very easily with a paintbrush. And you can add to your selection by holding the Alt key or, or Shift key and subtract from it by using the Alt key, which is how things are on the, on the keyboard end being erased or not. I think there's an add-on I can get that will display my key commands on screen, which might be nice if people can see when I'm using a keyboard shortcut or holding a button to, to accomplish something. Because Photoshop is a finicky beast. And it's nice to be able to see how other people do things sometimes, because then you can figure out how it might um, be useful to your own process. But everybody has a different way of doing things, so it, it may or may not be useful. thing about a layer mask is you can always put things back. There we go. I'm gonna fix the ink on this fan. It's a little chunkier than everybody else and it's gonna stand out if I put a gradient on it, if it's at that, if it's at that size.
Uh oh. Okay, Photoshop did the thing. Um. Myself and a few others have noticed that Photoshop likes to uh, occasionally freeze up to where you can no longer move the canvas with this version. I can still save, but I do need to exit out of Photoshop if I want to be able to uh, continue. I'll be right back. That seems to be behaving again. All right, I'm just going to resume um, fading out the tips of uh, the spines and um, I'll put on some music or I'll adjust the volume of the music. What I've done just now is hit Alt while looking at the layer mask. How layer masks work is anywhere that it's black, it's going to be erased. And anywhere that it's white, it's going to be 100% opaque. 
uh, and the grays in between will be various layers of levels of transparency in between. The more dark it is, the more transparent it'll be, the more light it is, the more opaque it'll be. So if you need to edit gradients back and forth, doing it on a layer mask is a great way to do it. But I was just, I wanted to explain just in case you guys all saw those, these black marks pop up and you're like, what are those? It's like, nope, that's layer mask. And you can view it by clicking on the layer mask while holding Alt, um, at least on a, on a Windows machine.
now looking at this again, and I'm thinking that doing every single fin tip is a little bit busy. So I think I'm only gonna do the big ones. Um, and with that in mind, I'm going to gradate out some of these small ones by just selecting them. I worry about going out of the lines because again this is just saying whether or not things are opaque or transparent. I've already made the choices of where the paint's gonna go. I might do just a little bit of these um, third ones out as kind of a transition to where it becomes fully opaque. Oh uh, is music too loud? Okay. Turning the music down a bit. Hold on, it seems to still. This must just be a loud track. I'm looking at the audio mixer. It's, it's the same level. Like the, it's been taken down by 35 decibels, but the, I think this track itself is just louder, and that's what's getting us. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, everyone. Okay. Maybe I'll fill that back in. I'll do it actually the opposite where I will fade these up instead of adding adding more more of them. There we go. Okay. Yeah, I think that's reading better. That said, I am still going to do some uh, spine fades here so they. Uh, the, these would display as the body uh, or the primary color. If you had a gene, the primary color would be peeking through at these locations, which is something we do with a lot of our wings. This isn't like unique. Um, it helps keep things from looking too puzzle piecey. Like, oh, this is, these are the wings and they're entirely green, even though the body of the dragon is red. This lets a little bit of red peek through on the wings and kind of ties the dragon together. So that's why we often have little bits of the spines peek through it. It, it sections it off a bit less. Um, less abruptly. Oh no! Oh, I hit the merge button at some point. I'm looking at my horns layer. Uh, oh, did, what, what, when did this happen? Hold on, history. Merge down, okay, oh. Oh, I just did it. I just did it. Okay, I, I thought I had lost. <laughs> I thought I had lost the layers. <laughs> okay, everything. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Um, my minor heart attack, but everything's fine. Oh, did I do that on the main layer? Let me disable the layer mask. Nope. Maybe layer mask. Why is this not working? Control D. Okay, I just still had a selection going. Okay, yeah, I think that's fine. I'm now going to um, Apply the layer mask.
And we're now going to create that second fin color, which is going to use the, the, uh, the color that we use for dragon manes um, in the secondary. The manes and wings are um, both part of the secondary, but we have two slightly different tones that we can use for them. So I'm going to create main wing. And I'm going to actually temper, if they don't follow any of the lines exactly, but I'm going to temporarily pop out the uh, fins, and that way I won't go anywhere that the fins don't exist. So this is gonna look a little bit silly for a little while, but it'll be fine in the end. Okay. And we're gonna just color these guys in. And this is where we can start to differentiate things because that little spine that's coming out behind, um, hold on, uh, behind the, uh, the head fin is part of the larger, um, the larger almost wing-like portion of this, uh, of this fin. So it will have a different color and that'll help to break break them apart, separate them. And in the final gene, like it's not going to be this, this visually uh, jarring. Like when you look at a main color compared to a wing color, they're very similar. They're just, they're just slightly, slightly different. So it's, it's going to be quite at least visually jarring. And I think we, since this is linked all the way up, all the way down the body, I think we can do, use the layer masks to do another gradient transition, where we can nicely transition from one color to another um, without having like any seams. I think that'll work out well. Um, someone's asking if the special ancient eggs are ever going to come back. Um, the clam bound eggs, I'm I don't like to say never for anything, but probably not. They were part of the release event. Um, the eggs that are kind of available uh, perpetually are the um, elemental eggs, the bog sneak eggs, and during Night of the Nocturne, the Nocturne eggs do come back. But everything else was just kind of like a part of the release event. So I don't think that the clan bound eggs are coming back. not in any current plans at the very least. All right, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new layer mask. And I'm going to grab this selection. Now this gets tricky because I've got to curve around, which means there's no one clean selection you can do, but there's some tricks that I have up my sleeve for, uh, you can, when, when you look at the uh, layer mask itself, you can manipulate things directly. And so what I might do is view this, and then I'm going to take um, this color, which is not black, and that'll be what I gradate with for the next segment that I do. And, um, it means it's already starting partially opaque. 
can go grab this, this next segment here. And I'm going to gradate from this to transparent. For anyone who uses layer masks, when I'm like, I have a trick up my sleeve, they're like, this is, this is not an amazing trick. Everybody knows this, but if you don't use layer masks a lot, this might be a good trick. <laughs> All right. And then this should be a relatively smooth looking transition. Oh, I'm still seeing, seeing a chunk. Oh, okay, I'm going to go ahead and blend some of these chunks. I might have just made this too much. Let's see what they do. Oh, actually, on the main color layer, that looks okay. Let's change it to a few, few different hues and see if it's visible. Get the lightness all the way up to white. Yeah, actually, that doesn't look too chunky. That's good. Right, good enough. Apply the layer mask. And I'm going to just clean up a few of these little extraneous bits. It's time to just get the uh, facial bits, um, the teeth, the eyes, the nostrils. And this stuff doesn't, generally speaking, get recolored by the image generator, so I can put it all on the same layer. So everybody has the same, I, generally speaking, ivory colored teeth. The eyes are on their own layer, so they don't need to... It doesn't really matter what the eye color I put here is. For the sake of this template, we'll just make them lightning colored eyes. It's a lightning ancient. And that's it for the flats. Uh, it's now time to shade the dragon. on the internet too much. When I when I say shade the dragon, it makes me think I'm going to start throwing insults at it rather than applying uh, color to it. 
Oh, someone's asking, has it been mentioned whether this is the female or male pose? Um, no, not yet. Um, we're gonna get the other pose and then make the, that decision. So right now, this is just a generic adult pose and we will assign a sex to the pose after the fact. I think that for the shadow layer, I'm gonna just flip the canvas just to get a new look at it all. Actually lighten up those teeth. Just drag in occasionally to the dentist. And I usually shade with a medium tan, but the um, the image generator uses its own shadow colors. Oh, the music got loud again. Oh no. Is it that the music's getting louder or is it that I'm getting quieter? Because I, I do lean back a bit sometimes and I'm wondering if that's what's going on. Okay, let me, let me turn the audio down a bit and we'll just bring the music back when, um, when I'm just kind of, I have nothing to say about what I'm doing. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, I guess the, um, I wonder if there's a way I can make iTunes normalize the music. Um, I'll, I'll need to look into that. So the three things I need to look into are Lazy Nazumi from the previous stream. I need to look into a program that will put my keyboard commands, like kind of list what I'm doing on the screen. And then I need to see if I can normalize my music so that this doesn't happen. Oh, I see what happened. Um, my mic, it used to, my mic used to be at plus six decibels. It's now at zero decibels. That's why I've lost all of my audio. Hold on. Um, I can fix this. I can fix it. Um, advanced audio properties. Yeah, we, the, the music didn't get louder. My mic... I had six decibels applied to it in OBS Studio. Okay, I should be very loud now. What is the music called? The music is from Stream Bites, um, and I believe the composer there is Harris Heller. And Stream Bites is a site where you can um, use the music for your live streams and um, not get it flagged by YouTube because the creator has uh, agreed that it being used for stream is okay by them. Um, at the end of the stream, I will link to Stream Bites in the description of the YouTube video because I do like to give credit to anybody whose work I use and that includes music artists who they put a lot of work into what they do. Uh, so I, I uh, that's where the music came from. All right, so with the shadows, I actually like to start out by painting the light in versus painting the shadows in. So I just flood fill the shadow layer and then just start erasing into it. And I might actually... I'm going to open up my previous jailer template and make sure I've got the right shadow color. <laughs> Give me that color. Okay. File close. That way I can shade it to have a similar look to it. The eyes are always fun to start off with. <laughs> There's no, no actual advantage to starting off with something so small. In fact, you should probably grab the uh, the larger areas first. I just I just like getting those eyes done. There, it's like a little treat. It's 
So I take the shadows out and then I also will use the paintbrush to paint them back in. In other places.
So what I'm kind of doing right now is trying to figure out where the light would fall and I'm putting it in generally to make sure I know where I, that I like where I'm putting it. And as you kind of saw with the belly scales, then I kind of refine it by subtracting and adding more shadows. Um, but I like to, with some of the major shapes, just make sure that the lighting makes sense because with the neck curving around in space, um, the parts that are going to be in shadow and not um, are going to change depending on the light source. The light source in this case, we're assuming it's kind of coming from the generic uh, top left. Um, but there's usually a sub light source somewhere uh, coming from the other side so that way I can highlight edges uh, just where it might help to make the colors more vibrant. Because uh, if too much of the dragon is in shadow, the colors don't aren't as vibrant. So you, Flight Rising has somewhat fantasy light sources, but it's good if it's slightly informed by a main light source uh, to kind of keep things looking mostly normal. <laughs> uh, mostly like they could be plausible in a 3D space. Um, so that's kind of what's going on here.
Um, I'm probably going to take a quick break here to get some beverage and um, take care of a couple things and I will be back in three to five minutes.
I think we have a mostly finished template. Um, I'm probably going to end the stream here. Um, I might look at this again in a day or two and make some more corrections, but um, I think that for now, this, this, this guy's done. It's uh, time to move on to another template. So thank you all for showing up and, 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 and checking this out. I really uh, am amazed that so many people are interested, uh, but I hope it was, uh, I hope it was um, at least somewhat entertaining to watch. Hope you all have a great rest of your day.